In this video, we will learn about precipitation. Actually, what is precipitation? Precipitation is nothing but water or particles coming from clouds. Okay. So, we call, usually we call rain and shower and snow, snowfall as precipitation. Okay. So, <coughs> clouds are there, we know. And they are consisted of usually consisted of ice particles or water or water vapor water vapor so how rain occurs from a cloud we also don't know seriously say exactly we don't know how a rain occurs but there are some theories three theories are there and we understand that these are the reasons for the rainfall okay so <coughs> Let us start with the rain. Actually, there are many types of precipitation, and the first one is drizzle. Drizzle or D Z. <coughs> In drizzle, the droplets are of 0.2 mm to 0.5 mm. Okay, that much small droplets are showered. That is called a drizzle. Then comes a rain or RA, symbol is RA, 0.5 mm to 5 mm. Then comes shower, SH, 5 mm to, <coughs> yes, uh, sorry, greater than 5 mm. Then comes Hail called is GR solid ice particles of 5 to 50 mm size. Okay, then snow is also there. Snow, yes, and ice crystals. Ice crystal is small ice crystal collections. Means just like sugar, sugar, uh, sugar it comes. That is called snow. Then comes snow grain. Yes, G. And ice crystals itself. These are the products as you can see in precipitation. One is a drizzle, 0.2 mm to 0.5 mm, then comes a rain, 0.5 to 5 mm, then shower, greater than 5 mm, hail, 5 to 50 mm, then snow, which is composed of ice crystal assemblies, then snow grain. Snow grain is something of thick snow grain type, <coughs> then ice crystals. These are precipitated from clouds. Okay. So, how a precipitation occurs? What are the reasons? One theory is ice crystal theory. Theory for the formation of rains and snowfall in cold regions. How it occurs is Suppose there is a cloud with ice crystals and water vapor. Okay. <coughs> In them, <coughs> one crystal is there. Okay. Due to sublimation, sublimation means latent energy is released and gas is directly turned to solid. Sublimation, water vapor can come in contact with an ice crystal and it will sublimate causing it to enlarge. A smaller, a small crystal is there, the size is increased now. And this happens eventually and after some time it can't, uh, it will uh, fall prey to the gravity and it will shower out of the cloud. This is not just a single happening. Thousands of crystals will be 
changing like this and a shower will happen and an ice shower will happen when it happens in a higher high cloud ice crystals will be falling and when it is about to reach ground temperature is high and so it will turn to water and the water drops will be very cold also okay this theory is called ice crystal theory but there is an issue this theory is not capable enough to describe how rain occurs in warm regions in tropics and all there this theory don't work because these ice crystals are not there because it is warmer and rain clouds are not so high that lapse rate is causing a freezing level temperature we can't say like that also we can see rain clouds at around 3000 to 5000 feet okay so what is the reason there there we found the coalescence theory coalescence theory what is this theory about cloud will be there with numerous tiny cool water droplets tiny water droplets will be there when one drop hit with another it will turn to a large drop and it happens all over the cloud small droplets collide each other to become larger drops small droplets are becoming large drops and when they become larger it will be heavier so that it can't be held in the cloud and it will come out of the cloud as rain that is called the coalescence theory okay then one more theory is there <coughs> that is the giant nucleus theory giant nucleus theory how it happens in this clouds are there just like coalescence theory it is something similar to coalescence theory also clouds are there and it usually describes rains above coastal regions in coastal regions in clouds itself small particles of salt will be there that salt makes a nucleus to trigger this coalescence salt particles dissolve in water and it it adds to the colliding power of the droplets and it triggers coalescence theory and thus rain occurs over coastal regions over clouds uh, in clouds which comes from sea directly from sea okay that is how giant nucleus theory works and now we have to learn which clouds are giving which type of precipitation okay all clouds are not giving similar precipitation so which one is giving which type one is stratus clouds they gives usually drizzle then comes alto stratus clouds they gives rain and snow then comes nimbostratus clouds this is the most important cloud that that gives rains and shower a continuous rain will be there from nimbostratus clouds then towering cumulus and cb clouds they gives rain snow hail then uh, shower everything can be expected from towering cumulus and cb clouds that is why we can say uh, cb clouds are some some uh, one among the most dangerous clouds in aviation <coughs> then what is the difference between sleet and snow sleet sleet is a mixture of water drops and snow and ice particles snow is a uh, of uniform composition of ice particles only and sleet is a mixture of both this also can come from towering cumulus and cb clouds
then comes cloud burst what is a cloud burst simply a cloud is bursting into rain or shower that is called a cloud burst if a shower usually a shower only it won't last for too much time it will last for a small period of time and this type of cloud burst means this type of showering causes flash floods what are flash floods flash flood sudden rise of water level in rivers or any water body due to cloud burst in most cases clouds usually burst into rain and shower and this causes a flooding sudden flood within minutes it can happen in some 10 to 15 minutes a flood can occur in some streams and small rivers and in larger rivers it will take some more time okay but this feature is called a cloud burst and cloud burst result, results in flash floods actually flash floods are not an aviation hazard because it is not affecting aviation but cloud burst are in some terms because due to that much showering aviation will also be somewhat affected then comes diurnal variation of rain diurnal variation so it is there in rain also right so what is diurnal variation in coastal regions we used to get rains during night and in early morning in coastal regions okay night and early morning and in tropics and in temperate regions we get what is the reason for that sea breeze and land breeze cause this happening catabatic and anabatic winds other reasons for diurnal variation of uh, rain precipitation in coastal regions and in temperate latitudes and in tropics temperates it it usually happens afternoons okay some convective uh, a reaction is also a reason for this this happening then comes artificial rain seeding what is that i think you might have heard about artificial rain seeding when some mishaps occur like forest fire and all rain seeding during droughts during uh, forest fires and uh, uh, for fog dispersal and all we need rain urgent rain in that time what we can do we have to induce rain okay we have to trigger raining so is there any method yes there are some uh, some chemicals which we can spray into clouds these chemicals will trigger that coalescence theory coalescence action or bergeron process it will trigger that this process and start raining within some 15 to 20 minutes it will start raining so what are the some of the materials used one is silver iodide then comes our common salt sodium chloride then comes potassium chloride then uh, solid carbon dioxide then yeah these chemicals are spread into clouds not a mixture actually any of these cloud uh, chemicals and it will, it will start or trigger up the coalescence reaction and it will start raining but there is one negative side for this also if we are doing this with a cloud that means we are depriving the rain which may fall 
in some other region at some other point of time. Okay, so it is not an advice thing, it is not a recommended thing. But when a rise, uh, uh, rise uh, when a need arises, we have to do something like this. That is rain seeding, artificial rain seeding. Then comes the amount of rain. Amount. When can we say a day as a rainy day? When there is 2.5 mm or more rainfall, we can say it as a rainy day. But it is light raining when the rainfall is less than 7.5 mm. Moderate if it is 7.5 to 33.5 mm. It is a rather heavy when it is 33.5 to 64 mm. It is heavy when it is 64 mm to 84.9 mm. It is very heavy when it is more than 85 85 mm or more. It is exceptionally heavy when it is 250 mm or more. Okay. These are the amount of rainfall. Means rainfall is categorized like this. When it is 2.5 mm rainfall in a day, we call it as a rainy day. When it is just less than 7.5 mm, it is a light rainy day. Moderate means 7.5 to 33 mm, rather heavy 33.5 to, 33 to 64, heavy 64 to 84.9, very heavy 85 mm plus, exceptionally heavy when it is 250 mm plus raining in a day. So we have covered the chapter precipitation also. So this is somewhat a bigger chapter, so we sh you should go through the video also once more and go through the study materials once again and start attending the online trial exam. Thank you.